Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on a really fun, kind of unexpected project. So we recently had a delivery of plants show up for Around the Hartley, which consists mostly of evergreens at this point. But in that load, there were five random flats of strawberries <laughs> that I did not order. Uh, so I called my mom because I ordered them through the garden center and I asked her if she maybe snuck five flats of strawberries onto the order, um, asked if she wanted me to bring them down to the garden center. She said she didn't order them. And the driver just said, well, they're on your order. I have got nine more stops. Can you just take them? Of course. <laughs> so we've got five flats of strawberries to plant. Five different varieties, which is so fun. Totally unexpected. This is a project I wanted to do, but I didn't think I was gonna get to it this year, and I'm not actually going to be planting them way, the way I want to for long term. I would like to have a raised bed put together at some point that ma maybe matches our berry beds, but it's like taller, maybe waist high, so we can tend to the strawberries and harvest them uh, without having to get on our knees or bend over, that sort of thing. But we have an open row in the cut flower garden that would be perfect for all of these strawberries to go because I don't think we're gonna get a raised bed built this year. Right here. Perfect. I think we'll take up this entire row with strawberries. This is where the artichokes were last year. We uh, mulched the artichokes up really well with leaves and grass and not a single one of them survived our winter. That was just an experiment. So good to know, right? Uh, and it's kind of nice because all of this soil, you know, as I dig holes for the strawberries, that organic matter will mix in. I think it'll be perfect, and why not? So I did pull the tag so you guys could see which varieties we've got. I think I've got 18 of each one of these. So this one, this is a seascape strawberry, which is a spring through summer bearing strawberry. Uh, it says high yields of very sweet, firm, bright red berries grown on vigorous virus resistant plants. White flowers are followed by the berries, which are excellent for fresh eating, freezing, or making jams and jellies. We've got ever sweet strawberries, which I've actually tasted before and they are good produces excellent tasting crop in June and then every six weeks until frost. We have a long growing season, so that'll work out great for us. Excellent fresh or for freezing. We've got Quinault strawberry, which is one that the garden center always sells. Uh, it's kind of an old classic. Everbearing plants yield a primary crop of large, firm, deep red berries in early summer with smaller crops continuing until frost. Good flavor, used for fresh eating desserts and preserves. And then we've got All Star, which I think are a June bearing. Let me see. Yeah, spring bearing, vigorous grower, large, light red, sweet and juicy berries. And then we've got, I do not have, know how to pronounce that, honey oil, honey I'm probably butchering that, strawberry. Also a June bearing, bright red, juicy fruit with delightful flavor, long fruiting season, very cold, hearty plant. So that's what we got to work with. So with strawberries, kind of like with raspberries, you have your June bearing, your ever bearing, but then you also have day neutral strawberries. And depending on where you live, um, one of those types might be better for your area. June bearing typically produce just the one uh, big crop, usually over the course of maybe three to six weeks-ish, um, and then they're done for the summer. And then you've got ever bearing that usually produce throughout the season, and then day neutral, which also will produce, I believe, throughout the season. We don't plant a whole lot of those around here. So if you are planting strawberries, strawberries to do some preserving like jams jellies freezing that sort of thing it's kind of nice to do a june bearing because you know you're going to get all of your crop kind of at the same time within the same time period at least and you get a lot all at once instead of you know kind of having them metered out through the season uh, it's a little harder to have the amount that you want if you're wanting to preserve especially if you're not planting a ton of plants which you can still do the same with ever bearing but again you may not have as like abundant of a crop all at the same time it's a little bit more spread out um um, but really good for fresh eating throughout the season. A few other things about strawberries, they want full sun. I would say eight hours minimum sun, eight hours or more. Out here they should be very happy because they're gonna get sun all day long. Really no protection, just sun. Um, they do like a slightly acidic soil, which for us we have a higher pH. They typically do okay here so long as we work the soil, like work good stuff into the soil, which they're gonna get the grass and leaves and all that stuff. Um, today, and we'll add more in, I'll also use land and sea compost. I'm going to be putting Biotone starter fertilizer in the planting holes today, so they should be pretty happy, but we just keep our eyes on everything. Um, usually, if I notice anything about strawberries, it's an iron deficiency problem here, and it's usually based on the fact that we have high pH. So we keep our eyes open for that and then adjust things if we need to. Consistent moisture is pretty important. We uh, water with drip tape out here, which is actually very nice. We use six inch spacing 
of the emitter holes on the drip tape and I'm going to be planting mine every 18 inches so it makes it very easy to get my spacing proper. Um, you usually want to space them at least 12 to 18 inches apart. 18 inches is where you will see most people recommend spacing. And the most important thing is to know how deep to plant your strawberry because there is a crown on the plant and you don't want to plant them too shallow or too deep. So let me show you that. Usually when you're buying pre-grown plants like this they're typically planted at the right depth but it does not hurt to double check because as I was looking at these, I came across this one. This one has been planted too shallow. You can see some of the roots. The crown is completely exposed. So the crown of a strawberry is about right here. It's right where the leaves and bloom stalks originate. You don't want to bury it. You don't want it to be under soil, but you don't want it to be too high either. So the soil level needs to be about right where that stick is, right there. So it's a good thing to double check. And if they're planted at the wrong depth, it can really mess up production, productivity of the plant. So anyway, here's what my plan is. I am going to be planting these every 18 inches, like I said. So I've got my auger out here. I'm just gonna go along, zip all the holes in. I'm gonna put biotone in the holes, land and sea in the holes, and then get them planted. So like I said, with this drip tape, it's really handy because we've got an emitter hole here. There's one six inches away, six inches and six inches. So since I wanna space these 18 inches apart, I know I can uh, plant one right here and then we'll go down three emitter holes and plant our next one. So I'll go every three emitter holes all the way down. I'm planning on putting one row on the outside of this drip tape and then one row on the outside of this drip tape, depending on how many I have, because I think I might have a little bit more um, than this row can handle. I might pop a few in the center. We'll see. Okay, so let's just prep our area and get these things in the ground. All done, 90 strawberry plants right here. Two 60 foot rows spaced every 18 inches apart, except for at the very end, you'll notice once we get down there, I had 10 extra plants because when you do 60 foot rows, space them every 18 inches, you can only fit 80 plants. And I had 90, so we squeezed them in at the end. So I put all of the ever bearing and day neutral varieties first, and at the very end, we've got the June bearing. So right here, starting off the row, we have the seascape strawberries, which I think are the biggest of all of these. They have a bunch of blooms already. They are a zone four. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but they look really good. One thing I forgot to mention, when you're planting your strawberries and being mindful about where the crown of the plant is, take into consideration whether or not you're gonna to wanna to mulch around your plant. If you're gonna to want to, which most people do because they don't want their fruit to be laying right in dirt or you know wet mud or anything like that, uh, you may want to pop your strawberry plants up just a slight bit higher, especially if you plan to put mulch right up to the base of the plant because you still, even with the mulch, you don't wanna cover the crown of the plant. 
Uh, a lot of people like to use straw, which is very pretty and soft, and the strawberries look so pretty just laying right on top of it. I wish I could use that, but we have way too much wind. I'd have straw everywhere. So we had mulch delivered, you know, to hill in our trees earlier on this spring. It's not the mulch that I would prefer to use like in our flower bed, so I've been using it out here in the walking paths of the flower garden. It's a little bit heavier, um, but not like a full-on wood chip. Heavier than straw, but not a full-on wood chip. Um, so anyway, I think that's what I'll use. This mulch right here. So you can see what it looks like. I usually like something a little bit darker in our flower beds. Um, anyway, I think this will be perfect so we can kind of just, you know, put a layer. I'll bring more in here right around the plants. So the seascapes go right. You can see the difference right here. The next variety is the quinaults which those go to about right here. Also a zone four. Um, these space out every 15 to 18 inches is what the tag says. But with runners and all that, with them filling in, I feel like 18 inches is a good spacing. And then we have the Eversweets, which they call an everbearing day neutral. They are a zone five, so a little tiny bit less winter hardy. Uh, and you know, I've been finding information all over the board in terms of spacing. Some say they'll grow six inches, some say they'll grow 16 or 18 inches. So I just went with the 18 inch spacing on pretty much everything to be safe. Then we have our all stars, which are June bearing uh, zone four. And then we have the variety I cannot pronounce, Hanuai, Hanuai, whatever. These actually say that they get quite wide, like two to three feet. So I might have to pop those middle ones out and move them. Either way, I'm super excited to have these out here. I wasn't really expecting to do it and I did pay for the strawberries. I don't, I probably made it sound like I got them for free, but I figured out, I tracked it down and I did figure out they were on an order along the way. So anyway, I did pay for them. I didn't take them from the company or get the driver in trouble or anything like that. Um, just FYI, I didn't think to mention that. But anyway, what I'm thinking is we'll just leave them here for however long it takes for us to finish a raised bed. At that point, we might dig them up and transplant them or we might get fresh berries. I don't know a lot about life cycle of strawberry plants, but I've talked to a couple of commercial growers who say they start over every two to three years with fresh plants. Um, so. If that's the case, I'll just leave them out here until they kind of start to peter out and then maybe we'll start fresh. Uh, I do know that, you know, a lot of these will produce runners and it's not good to leave all the runners attached to that mother plant because then it just takes all the energy away from the mother plant. Typically you want to leave just two or three um, attached or let two or three form and then you can, you know, cut the, the runner and let those kind of form up on their own. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how these do. I haven't ever grown strawberries like this many all at one time. They're usually, you know, in containers here and there or tucked into a raised bed. So this will be a different experience for us. I know the kids are just gonna love it though. They are going to love it. It's gonna be so much fun. Anyway, that is it for today. Other exciting news though is that our flower shed's supposed to be painted tomorrow and then the roof can go on. I still haven't found lights for the front yet that I really like that fit really well, but it's all coming together, you guys. It's so exciting. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye. P.S. What I was pouring out of the white bucket is the biotone because I opened this bag like a total animal. I don't know what I was doing, but anyway, it wasn't coming out of the bag very easily. Way easier to pour it out of the bucket. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that that's what this is.